Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Essential Guide to System Configuration in Cubase 12. I've got a new mic position today and it's oppressing me slightly, so uh, I'll try not to be too distracted. Today we're going to talk about um, configuration, templates, the basic setup of our application. Basically the way we want the application to look every time we load or create uh, a project. If you're enjoying this series and you want to help support my channel, uh, check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below. Fantastic way to do that. I'm going to close this project down and I'm going to start completely from scratch with the hub. Take a quiet moment of contemplation with Snoopy while we do. And I'm going to go to the recording tab where I've got my standard template. Now I used to have multiple templates for different purposes and that's really what you're supposed to do. But I am a bear of very simple brain and I've found that I actually prefer to have a single template that I use for all of my projects. I'm a solo musician, I know what I like, I know the kinds of sounds that I like, and I've got it basically to the situation where every time I create a new project, I want exactly the same starting point. And so you can see I've only got a single standard template. I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna show you how to create this today. And I'm gonna click Create. Now I just did that a little bit too quickly because before I pressed the Create button, I want to make sure that I've got this prompt for project location. I want to be in control of this stuff. So I'm going to click create. Then I'm going to head into my Cubase projects folder. So all of my music is stored in this Cubase projects folder. And just because I find it simplest to work this way, I'm going to create the folder from inside here. I can right click new folder and I'm going to say template test, select that folder. And once that's done, this is what we've got. Every project of mine starts out looking like this. I'm going to go through some of the features and attributes of this today. Before we go any further, let's just uh, nip into the Cubase Projects folder and see what we've got. So here's template test. And you can see that it's created a single blank fol folder called audio and there's nothing inside it. However, we are poised and good to go. The one thing that I now need to do, and I do this the moment this project opens, just for my own kind of peace of mind and to make sure that everything is up and running, I'm gonna save the project. So if I click save, it's gonna to default to the template test folder. That's exactly what I want. And I'll call the project the same thing as the folder. And this is what we're after, a .cpr file underneath the template test folder. Everything is now gonna be stored inside this folder. All of the audio that I record is gonna go in here any other project settings or basically anything to do with this song whatsoever is all going to go inside this folder. Because in this series we're making a habit of having a look under the hood and trying to understand as much as possible about what's going on behind the scenes, if we have a look in the Cubase 1264 folder, there's a folder called Project Templates. Have a look in there. There's my standard template. If you have multiple templates, obviously, they're all going to appear there. So this is how every one of my projects starts. Let's just have a, a whistle stop tour of some of the things that I think are really important. Dividing the track list, I think is an absolutely essential uh, life hack. And there it is, divide track list in the project menu. You can see I've got some metadata tracks at the top. The bookmark track is where, believe it or not, I store my bookmarks. I have keyboard shortcuts set up for all of the various bookmarks. Really annoys me that you don't get auto labeling on the uh, on the bookmarks anymore. Don't know why they've stopped that. The harmonic info marker track, as you can see, this is where I would set up stuff like scales, um, sections of songs, chorus, bridge, any notes that I might want to make to myself, I can put on this track. So these aren't markers necessarily that I'm gonna jump to. It's just information for me to help me as I'm going along. I might even occasionally write out the notes of a particular scale um, if I wanna kind of help remind myself about that kind of stuff. Signature and tempo track, pretty self-evident. And then the master bus and stereo out are my standard routing options. And um, I have already done a, a, a video on my routing options and all of the various different types of instruments that I like to categorize. I'll stick a link to that, uh, to that above. But you can see that we've got some really useful out of the box stuff. Let's have a look at the guitar track, for instance. If we nip into the mixer, you can see that my guitar track's got a couple of multi effects units. Uh, baked right in. So this is my current default standard guitar sound of choice. A couple of sends, go into a, a delay and a reverb. So when I first pick up the guitar, this is generally speaking the default sound that I want. Obviously all of it's editable, that's the whole point of it being a default. And I'm constantly twiddling these things. 
But like I say, my template is a growing, evolving thing. It changes on a week to week basis. This is just what it looks like at the moment. All of the other tracks you can see are pretty clean. On the mono guitar in, you can see that I've got the tuner. Now, if I click the tuner open, you're not gonna see it immediately because it's actually at the bottom right hand corner of my second monitor. I have it active more or less all the time and it sits right out of the way. So basically, all the time that I'm playing the guitar, if I do a pitch bend and I'm I'm in practice mode and I'm trying to improve you know, my tone, I can cast a, uh, a glance at the tuner and instantly see whether or not I've pitched up to the correct tone. Should be using your ears, I understand that, but there's nothing like a little bit of visual validation to help you. Over on the stereo out bus, you can see I've got a brick wall limiter. You should never not have a brick wall limiter on your output. You might plug a synth in that has some feedback um, options that can get pretty egregious pretty quickly. If you've got a brick wall limiter protecting your ears right at the very end of the chain, even after the output fader, so this is the very last thing in the system, everything goes through this brick wall limiter, basically just protecting me from craziness that might hurt. I, I use headphones, so I need to be careful. You can see that all of my primary song options are really generic and really carefully selected. 100 BPM, 4-4 time signature. I don't have soft quantize engaged, just make sure you can see that, um, because that can sometimes screw up uh, how, you, how your quantizing works. Make sure it's turned off by default. If I wanna turn it on, I'll do that explicitly. Mixer set absolutely zero, absolutely central. So this is a really lovely template and I, I've been using this for a few months now actually with not very much editing. If you fancy setting up something like this yourself, it's incredibly simple. Just create yourself a totally empty project and build all of the components that you think you need. Don't put any music on it, don't put any, you know, don't put any data in there. The one concession I make to that is that I have an instance of Groove Agent with an actual acoustic kit preloaded. Once again, just really easy to get up and running with all of this stuff set up. Once you've got to the stage where you're completely happy with everything, including your window configurations, what do you want open, what do you want closed, all of this is gonna get saved as your default template. And then you go into the file menu, and instead of saying save, you say save as template. And then if I select this and say okay, it'll say, are you absolutely sure you want to do this? Well, in this case I don't, because I've been fiddling around, so I'll press cancel. But that's how you create your template. That file's now stored in your roaming folder, and as you saw earlier, we can always access it from our hub in the recording tab. So if I'm opening existing projects, I'll use my recent tab, generally has the stuff that I'm currently working on. If I'm creating a new project, I'll hop across to my recording tab. That's where my standard template lives. On top of that, we also have workspaces. So if I go to my workspaces menu option, and I select main view tuner on. If I select that, a couple of things happened which you can't immediately see because I'm operating in a split monitor mode here, but I've now got a mix console and my tuner in the bottom right hand corner of my monitor window, which is the normal place it lives. That's what the workspace option gives you. Basically allows you to configure your actual window layouts, what you want open, what you want closed, and then save that as a default workspace. And there are two different kinds of workspaces. You've got global and project. What I just selected there was a global project. If I just select my small mix console so that I can get away from what I've just currently had selected, you can see this little G tells me that this is a global workspace, which means it's accessible by every project. You can also create bespoke workspaces for just a particular subject. For instance, I have a standard project that I use when I'm doing plugin deconstructions. And for my plugin deconstructions, I'll have a standard suite of analysis tools. I'll just open the project and show you what that looks like. So let's say I'm doing a deconstruction of the DX7. I can go into my workspaces selection. And now I've got a new option called analysis mode. This is a project workspace. It only lives insi inside this, um, this test project. And as you can see, when I engage it, I get a tuner, an oscilloscope, and a spectrum analyzer. So as you can see, it's really useful if I'm demonstrating audio techniques to be able to display all of that information at the click of a button. So workspaces are great, and you have to decide 
If something is specific to the project that you're working on, make it a project workspace. You want it available every time uh, you're working on a project to make it global. One thing I intended to mention in this video, but forgot, I've just turned the camera back on to do this, uh, is to talk about the profile manager. The reason I forgot to talk about it is because I don't use it, but I do want to bring your attention to the fact that it is there. I was initially confused as to what the purpose of this was. When you've got the ability to save templates and back up your projects, uh, create your workspaces, all of the configuration that you need is in everything I've talked about today. Profile managers are all about primarily picking your project up and taking it to a third party environment. So it ignores stuff like your audio settings, your control room settings, your plugin presets, anything that's specific to your environment, it won't carry along with it. But your default project uh, setup, how you want your tracks to appear, uh, the plugin, the VST plugins themselves, it does remember that information. So basically you would be relying on your third party environment if you were taking this round somewhere else to, to, to work on the song a little bit. You know, you're going to need some kind of sync between the environments. The reason I don't use it is because this is my music writing environment. I never take these projects anywhere else, but if I did, I would export the profile uh, in the profile manager. This then lets you create an SRF profile. You can see here's my Anthony's profile. But once I realized that profile management was redundant from my perspective, I basically left it alone and don't use it after that point. But if you're somebody who wants to work in multiple environments, that might be something that you'll want to look into a little bit more. Just reloaded my template test project, get us back to where we were. Last thing I want to talk about today uh, briefly is the VST plugin manager. This is another area of configuration in which you can spend many a happy hour. I absolutely love sorting all of this stuff. I've done a very detailed video uh, on the plugin manager. I'll put a link above, but this is just a place for me to mention. This is something that you want to get configured as soon as you can, really. It, you use it so often, it's so important to get it right. I have two primary uh, methods of sorting my plugins. One is by manufacturer, as you can see, and this other one, FX Categories, allows me to see all of the uh, plugins. Well, it's completely self-evident what it is. The other important point to mention about, mention about the plugin manager, which isn't necessarily immediately noticeable, this little I button at the bottom is hugely valuable. It says, show VST plugin information. Make sure that you've got that open so that when you click on um, on plugins, let's find an example of one. Here we go. This is telling me that the Archuria flanger has a latency of 146 milliseconds. That's something I need to know about. I might need to basically take steps to mitigate that latency. Uh, here's the ASIO guard enabled. Pretty much leave ASIO guard enabled 100% of the time. Also shows you the installation path. You know, I'm making a point of saying throughout this video series, this is where this thing lives. If you want to find out where your plugins live, this is a great place to see. So that's my standard uh, configuration setup. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.